Biden's the target. And this is the target of selling out his country. Let me repeat this. Selling out his country for cash money. The div- in the Biden family and in this nation with these oligarchs, the div- divine right of cash. That's the oligarchy we live under. Tell me, first off, why is Politico, CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post, New York Times, why are they tweeting out multiple tweets on Santos at the same time this is going on and not one tweet of this and not one piece of live coverage from them? Of course, they're going to cover for Joe Biden. He's a member of the establishment. But what I mean by that, it goes a lot deeper and really a lot darker than that. All of these Chinese foreign influence groups that the Biden family had been running around the globe with, taking in millions of dollars from, again, through a variety of cutouts over 20 different LLCs that were created while Joe Biden was in office, yet no one really knows what exactly their family business was. There's nothing to show for it except a bunch of suspicious activity reports. But CEFC China Energy got glowing profiles from the mainstream media. Ye Jianming uh, pranced around Washington, D.C. Patrick Ho would host conferences featuring now high-level appointees in the Biden regime as speakers, members of the mainstream media class, really members of the D.C. elite. So it goes to what you were talking about with Liz Harrington earlier in the show. Yes, let's make this about Joe Biden. Biden because he's the president of the United States and it's a national security threat to have him in office. But Joe Biden is really just an archetype for your typical D.C. sellout establishment politician. And the entities that are compromising these individuals, at least when you're talking about the Chinese Communist Party, it's all the same, whether it's mainstream media types, talking heads, pundits academics. So, of course, they're not going to report on it. They're going to play the card of of just not talking about it, which, frankly, is another tactic straight out of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, It's propaganda media. And we even see that with the fact that our intelligence community is involved with the suppression of the story, Hunter Biden's hard drive, of course, that now infamous letter. They also haven't been reporting on that. So it's no surprise, like I, I said, and I've been reporting For years now, you know, back when I was at the National Pulse under Raheem Kassam, a lot of the reporting that they mentioned today, and no disrespect to the Oversight Committee, but Raheem and I broke years ago. And I understand that you have to do it the right way and subpoena bank records to really substantiate those claims. But it's not like the mainstream media is just missing this press conference. They missed, you know, footnote 192 of a 2000 page novel detailing the Biden family's epic corruption from the corners of Romania to Ukraine, to Iraq, to Afghanistan, to frankly, all the way uh, running back here to the United States, like Comer joked in the press conference, China is probably the most legitimate country that this family was doing business in. And that says a lot. So this is sort of the 11th hour. And I'm not surprised that the mainstream media is ignoring it because that's what their behavior has been since uh, day one of this story. Family members that received wire transfers from foreign nationals via shell companies. Number one, Hunter Biden. Number two, James Biden. Number three, Sarah Biden. Number four, Haley Biden. Number five, Kathleen Biden. Number six, Melissa Biden. Number seven, a niece nephew. Number eight, a niece nephew. Number nine, grandchild. Well, it was Joe Biden who wrote an op-ed for the New York Times in 2011 where he said, China's rise isn't our demise. And while people like you and I, China hawks, would say, what are you saying? You are so wrong geopolitically from a national security perspective. But when they were saying our rise or China's rise isn't our demise, they were never talking about the American people to begin with, right? Joe Biden was talking about his faction of the global elite, who, frankly, China's rise and the Chinese Communist Party's ascent has led to the rise of people in the Biden family, has led certainly to the rise of the numbers in their bank accounts. But this really is... I think just a symptom of a broader systemic problem here in the United States. And the issue is that the Chinese Communist Party has conducted a masterclass in creating an ecosystem 
where these mainstream media outlets are so compromised, both through cold, hard cash, but also just ideologically, that they're so quick to dismiss this investigation, uh, this story, uh, as just a whole big nothing burger, uh, when in reality, the bank records indicate very, very, very clearly otherwise. And I will say, it's important to note that at the end of this show, hey, no conspiracies, only coincidences, but at the end of the second hour of War Room, that'll be the deadline for which the FBI has to comply uh, with the subpoena for that 1023 form um, about that whistleblower who uh, has evidence of Joe, Joe Biden directly being involved with the pay-for-play scheme. But again, it's not like it was just the hard drive that documented these instances. We're lucky that fell into our hands, but these institutions knew about this for a very, very, very long time. And the cover-up, like I said, we're in the 11th hour of it.